All right, fig growers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I am super excited to review this particular fig for you guys today. This is a variety called Pastelier. It is a standard for people in cold climates, short season climates, and people who just want very tasty fruit. In fact, a lot of growers have even said this is one of the best, if not the one fig they would choose above all others, if they can only choose one. So I'm really happy to evaluate the, the tree the variety, evaluate the characteristics, and of course, taste its amazing fruits. However, I'm more excited actually, because this video, in my opinion, is going to confirm, hopefully for you guys, because it has for me a theory of mine about Pastelier and different varieties besides Pastelier, like Celeste, St. Martin, and really all figs, why they could potentially drop their fruits. What is one of the reasons why Pastelier, or what is the reason why Pastelier drops its fruits? And I think you have to understand, before we go a little further with this variety, one of the most notorious and famous things about this fig is that it just is known to be a dropper. What does that mean exactly? That people claim this fig, when young, drops its fruits consistently. And a lot of people have made the argument in the past that, oh, well, in the third year, it'll stop dropping its fruits. So it's, it's a maturity problem. Other people have said, oh, well, actually, I think it's partially parthenocarpic, meaning it needs pollination, but only a little bit. And so if it doesn't get that pollination, it'll drop its fruits. Other people like myself have made the argument that actually it could be the source of a pastelier. So I went out of my way like four years ago, maybe even a little bit longer than that, to try to find a pastelier that wouldn't drop. And I consulted with a lot of people about this variety, tried to figure out as much information as I could, and it seemed like certain growers were seeing the dropping consistently and others were not. And not only were they not seeing the dropping consistently, but they didn't even know that it could drop and that they'd never really seen any dropping. So why is that? And I thought, as I learned more about these figs, another variety that drops figs pretty consistently is Celeste, and different types of Celeste. There's so many different strains, so many sources, they're all slightly different than each other. And then I found another fig that was giving me problems called St. Martin, but St. Martin's common, we know it's common, but why is it, why is it dropping its fruits? And I eventually formed a, a theory that basically claimed that Pastelier and all these other figs, and even just any variety, that if the tree is overly shaded, or the fruits, excuse me, are overly shaded on the branches because of a dense canopy, a lack of sunlight in general, poor training, poor pruning, larger leaves actually that Pastelier tends to form, very large leaves that typically hide the fruits. Celeste is a classic example of that. Uh, and if you get all those things right with the lack of sunlight, any fig could drop and reject those fruits in that shady portion of your tree. So it's good to always pay attention to the sunlight, not just when we set up the form, when we try to get the fruit buds to actually set fruits on the branches, we need a certain sunlight requirement. But the other requirement is a continual sunlight requirement that I would argue is maybe a bit less to keep the fruits on the branches, continue ripening without having them drop off the tree. And this is just, I think is classic with this fig. Pastelier, not only does it have larger leaves, but it's a very upright grower. So is Celeste. They tend to grow upwards and more erect with these large leaves that just inevitably shade out the fruits. And so I always try to recommend to you guys, get stakes, put your branches on an angle that opens up the canopy, that opens up that sunlight to get into that canopy and hit the fruits so that they don't drop. They also produce more fruits that way. This is my tree from Paradiso, it's a Pastelier, excuse me, from a grower named Ciro in Italy. He's a commercial grower. And this is one of, I think, three or four sources of Pastelier that I have. Um, and so far I've noted absolutely no dropping. So I think personally, because the form's perfect, all the fruits are getting sunlight, that's the reason. 
The second reason it could be is the source, but I seriously doubt that's the case. If you want to grow this particular source, actually, I have a couple trees of it for sale on my website, bigboss.com. But again, I don't think it's the source. I think it's the sunlight, as noted by a number of other figs, different varieties, not just pastelier, that exhibit the same habit. So here's the tree. It's in a five gallon pot. It was grown as a single stem whip. It's a very vigorous grower. I think people, for some reason, claim that this is a, a dwarf fig. That really depends on the hormones. If you do a lot of pruning, this tree is gonna grow very quickly. If you don't do pruning, it's gonna grow rather slowly and may end up being a slower grower. But the figs, the branches themselves are not dwarf. They are very thick in diameter. Um, and I would argue against it actually being a dwarf fig. It's very productive, as you note, as you can see here. It's even producing doubles. This is definitely one of the most productive figs I think I've come across in terms of main crop production. So um, it's early, it's hardy, it's super reliable. Um, let's taste the fruits and talk a little bit more about it. Um, in fact, as I said, I think earlier in the video, some people make the claim that if they can only choose one fig, this would be it. And I, I have to just agree, it's a superb variety. It's blue, it's gorgeous, it tastes great. Um, these fruits are just stunning. I don't know how anyone could kind of disagree with that. And they also taste good. So let's cut these open and actually get a taste. They're beautiful, aren't they? My goodness. Truly blue in color. Okay. Let me cut this open real quick, guys. We have had a little bit of rain. While this one here I just cut, the smaller one was ripening. This one has not been uh, exposed to too much rain and it's definitely lower ripeness, but I wanted to pick this one just to show you what I'm dealing with here with this variety to fully explain or expose this fig. See the difference there in ripeness actually? It's pretty crazy. So even though it is blue or fully blue on the outside, doesn't mean it's right. You always got to check that neck. So let's try this. This is just stunning. Look how red that is. Really nice pigmentation. It's gorgeous. Very fruity. Very sweet. Nice sugar content. That's a really nice tasting fig. I would probably give it, definitely place it higher up in the ranks of the varieties I've ever tasted. Um, so it tastes great and it's reliable. I mean, that's what more else could you want? This one's more melon flavor. Has more of that underripe fig flavor. I would prefer to get them on the tree a bit longer. I'd say the hang time is a bit average or slightly below average. Nonetheless, that is past the air there, guys. It's a real nice tree. Very happy to have it. I think anybody would. And if you just give it the right amount of sunlight, you train it properly. Look how upwards these shoots are, by the way. Look how erect. It's just growing straight up in the air. Not every fig variety does that. Typically they'll grow on more of an angle. But anyway, guys, there it is. Thanks for watching this one. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Check out the blog, figboss.com. We'll see you guys for the next video. Take care.